Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. Uh, we are continuing our uh, our journey through the Christmas story. <laughs> we, we went way back in time, went all the way to the beginning, all the way to Genesis, but have been walking through uh, New Testament passages, Old Testament passages, telling the story of Christ's arrival as we are getting close to celebrating that amazing day on Christmas morning. Uh, today, we are in Luke chapter 1. And yesterday, we read the account of of John the Baptist recognizing uh, the infant or the Jesus inside Mary's womb. Um, John the Baptist was in Mary's womb. Uh, he leaped for joy. He, he moved, and then Mary or then Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she recognized the Christ Child. And her response was, "You are blessed because you did what the Lord said." Now, what is Mary's response to that? Mary's response is, "We we have this song of praise," and and what a great model. When amazing things happen to us, when we are blessed, what should we do? We should thank God. I mean, it sounds obvious, right? Like, of course, of course I thank God when good things happen in my life. Of course I thank God, but but do we? Do we in that moment? A lot of times we, we pray for something. We ask for something to happen. We, we uh, you know, ask other people. To, and then when it happens, we move on to the next thing. Uh, we're, we're so quick to to forget to stop and praise and thank God. So this is uh, Mary's account of, of her praise to God, her response to what God is doing in her life, the fact that she is blessed. And as we look through this, we'll find some, some really cool things about um, why she's blessed and, and who is blessed. We're going to draw some parallels there. Uh, let me read it here. It says this, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. So in, in that uh, statement there, there's nothing special about me. I'm a lowly servant girl, but for generations to come, I'm going to be called blessed. Why? Well, Elizabeth just said why she was blessed. Because she did what God told her to do. She believed that God could do what he said he would do. So her life is blessed because of that. It says this in 49, for the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He's done great things for me. Not I've done great things for him. He's done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their throne and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful, for he made this promise to our ancestors that Abraham and his children forever. So as you look at this, as I was kind of reflecting on this morning, just this idea of being blessed, that God has blessed me. People will call me blessed. And it, in my mind, fast forwarded to about 30 years later, when Jesus begins his public ministry, and as it's recorded in Matthew, um, his Sermon on the Mount. And he starts off this Sermon on the Mount by talking about who is blessed. And he says things like, blessed are the meek and the humble. Blessed are the, the poor in spirit. And blessed are the peacemakers, the merciful. A lot of the, the same parallels in here, Mary talks about the uh the, the the humble ones, the um, God's going to exalt the humble, that those who are, are hungry are going to be fed, uh, that God's going to remember the merciful, that, that God's kingdom is consistent. God isn't necessarily looking for the person with the most talents, isn't looking for the person uh, that has everything in their life in order, that, that God is looking for people whose hearts are right, regardless of their current situation. People who are poor, who are humble, uh, who are uh, merciful. These are the type of people that the world tends to overlook because they're not throwing themselves at the front of the line. They're, they're not waving their hands saying, pick me, pick me. I mean, that, that's, that's Mary and herself. Mary didn't volunteer for this job. She didn't apply for this job. She just lived her life honoring God, being his servant, doing being willing to do whatever he'd ask. I would imagine, you know, living in her family, serving, loving, <laughs> worshiping God. And when the moment came, God picked her from obscurity and brought her to a place of, of, 
of, of being blessed because she chose to follow him. So if you're today and you're kind of wondering, man, could God use me? You know, there's nothing special about me that I don't have any specific talents or I don't really have any position of authority or, or anything like that. I'm just going to be a side character in God's story. Well, guess what? We're, we're all side characters in God's story because God is the main character. But he does have a role for you to play. And if we keep our hearts humble, if we keep ourselves from, from crawling, crying, crawling up to the top, God will work in and through us. And he will elevate you. He will give you a role to play, meaningful kingdom work, work that will last forever. They'll have eternal impacts if our heart is right. So Mary's response, a couple things here today. It points out, once again, the type of people that God uses. The type of people that God uses. Merciful, humble, um, not proud, uh, not climbing their way to the, to the top of the food chain. But it also reminds us that when God does use us, when God does give us an assignment, when God does work in and through us, the credit has to go back to him. The response is to praise God for what he has done through us. Not praise God for what I was able to do. God, praise you for what you did through me. It's that recognizing that it's God at work, using our flaws and our imperfections and the talents and the abilities that he's given us. But those all come from God as well. All right, let's go ahead and pause there for today and let's get ready with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we start today with a word of praise. God, how amazing you are. <laughs> how you've created us. You have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. You've given us talents and gifts and abilities and personality. God, that all comes from you. And God, today as we walk into this new day, we just hold it with an open hand. And we just pray that that dangerous prayer, use me. Use us today, Lord. And may you get the credit every single step of the way. May we remember to stop and pause and celebrate what you have done in and through us. May our life be just full of, of worship, of praise, constantly pointing, our, reminding ourselves and others around us that it's you who gets all the credit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now, right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.